All right, I think I'm on. Am I? No, you're, testing, no, you're. testing, anybody? Can anyone see me? All right. Good morning, Living Hope. Good morning. I hope that you can all hear me right now. Uh, you guys think that I'm going? Am I doing okay? We are just trying to figure this whole thing out and make sure that we can live stream this uh, message to you uh, this morning. And the guys are working feverishly to try to make sure that each part is working. We had so a few technical difficulties, but the Lord is blessing us to help us uh, get through that. Um, so uh, is everybody there? You see me? Um, you guys got this test? Doing good? Can you hear me through here? All right. Very cool. All right. So guys, good morning. Good morning. Uh, is everyone there? <laughs> All right. Here we go. Guys, I hope that you are all awake, and uh, I hope that you are sipping on your coffee right there from the comfort of your own home. You guys, probably they're going to hear you too, if you don't know that. They're going to hear you when you're talking. <clears throat> all right. All right, guys. So I know that I'm live, but we're just trying to figure out how to get this thing running up and going. I hope that you are enjoying sipping on your coffee at home, hopefully from your couch. You know, uh, I know this whole uh, live stream thing is going to be a little strange, a little weird. I, I saw a post on uh, Facebook uh, a few uh, moments ago, and it was, be praying for your pastor so that, you know, uh, when you're looking at all these other pastors that are trying to do the same thing around uh, the world uh, today and trying to live stream, you're hoping that it doesn't turn out like a, a Bin Laden hostage video. Okay, you don't want to have it look bad. Uh, so I'll just be praying for your pastor. So no, I hope that you're enjoying your coffee or sitting down at your couch um, at home. Please, if you haven't, go to the bathroom, come back, have your Bible ready in your lap to receive the word of God. And um, now the cool thing is with this new equipment that we just got, I can actually see right into your living room. So, uh, Eric Yackel, those are some serious, weird Spider-Man pattern that you have on your, uh, your pajamas. And uh, Viola Morgan, um, I didn't know that you liked Elsa from uh, Frozen. Uh, that's uh, some nice jammies, too. And uh, Jamie Jadamski, uh, is that a big bird uh, yellow robe at, from Sesame Street? I, I, it looks good, <laughs> right? Um, listen, we can have a little bit of fun, right? Please don't take me to the bathroom with you. Please don't bring the iPad or your tablet into the bathroom. That's going to be a little weird for me. Don't do that. And uh, Pastor Pat, is a message for you. Please save me some oatmeal with the peanut butter. Okay, I want the peanut butter on it. All right, and whoever you are, I don't know who you are, but the person who's got the three cases of toilet paper sitting in your living room, I am asking you, please share it with everybody. Come on. All right? <laughs> We can have a little bit of fun. Sometimes we need a little bit of relief uh, from what is going on in the world today. And uh, the Bible tells us that humor, in Proverbs 17, it says, A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. And I think a, a lot of us right now, we need some humor. We need a little bit of merriment. We need to, if you're anything like me, during this coronavirus, this COVID-19 kind of thing, we need a little bit of relief. And that's exactly what I want to talk to you about today is anxiety relief, the power of the squeeze. Please bow your heads with me in prayer. Father God, I do pray, as this is so weird and so strange to me to be preaching to an empty room, but I just... Lord, I'm asking for your full intercession, that your blessing would be over every person from the comfort of their home, that they would connect with your Holy Spirit right now, that we would all hear from you, that we would be in, in tune with your Spirit, knowing exactly what you want for us to learn and grow from. I pray, Father, that you ease people's anxieties over this right now. Lord, help them to know we're going to get together again we're going to be together to be able to fellowship and to honor and glorify you. But Lord, I pray that you help us to recognize the enemy will not win because we're going to join together in spirit, right from the comfort of our homes, 
growing in relationship with you, knowing you better and making you know. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, my rock and my redeemer. Please, I pray that this message comes across loud and clear and that it would ease people's anxieties and that they would learn how to battle against anxiety with your word and with prayer and the tools you have put within the word of God that will help us to be all that you've asked us to be. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hopefully you're saying amen from home and that you can still hear me. Uh, please forgive us as we are trying to figure this whole thing out. And you can communicate right with us uh, through uh, our Facebook page and uh, send us a message. And our awesome Mike Mags will be able to uh, be able to communicate back to you. Okay. Are we still doing good, guys? Everything still working? All right. Okay. Almost. Am I, am I uh, continue on with the message? All right, very good. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. So last week, last week, we talked about some important stuff that I think is important to use as a build to what we're to say today. Guys, everyone wants to know, what should the Christian response be to this whole coronavirus uh, thing? I says, last week, I really believe if you do these three things, these are the things that will help you have the proper response. Number one, you need to be prayerful. You need to be prayerful. Don't panic. Turn your anxieties into prayers. Be prayerful. Don't panic. Turn your anxieties into prayers. The three scriptures that back that up are Philippians 4, 6, Psalms 91, and James 1, verses 6 through 8. In Philippians 4, 6, it tells us, be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests be made known to God and then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Don't be anxious. You need to turn those anxieties into prayers. Now, what I've recognized, this is something that has been very uh, important to me when it comes to anxiety in my own life. What I've noticed is the Bible says, Jesus, about Jesus, it says, take every thought captive unto Christ. So what I've pictured is, when I have a thought of anxiety that stiffens me up and tightens me down and kind of gets me into a place where I want to run and hide, I've recognized I need to take those thoughts captive. It's as if I'm dragging them in, kicking and screaming before the throne room of God. And I'm saying, God, here's my anxieties. Do something with them. And then the Lord would then slay those anxieties and be able to put them to rest, put them to death. So then I and then more empowered in the confidence in my Lord over those anxieties. I now no longer have to take and walk out of his throne room with them because the Lord has taken and slain them. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Now, I have no one responding here except for I have some cardboard cutouts that are up over here. It's kind of interesting. But uh, <laughs> um, at, at any rate, so here, what I want you guys uh, also to know is the second thing. Well, first off, I got God, please help me to not have this be a bin Laden video. Listen. All right. <laughs> so second thing is this, the, the second part of that is Psalm 91. When you're talking about prayer, you have to think of Psalm 91 as your way to give you some shelter, the way to get protection. Now, when the plague is trying to get you at night and the epidemic during noonday, the Bible tells you in Psalms 91 that if you make God your most high and your shelter, that his shadow takes and covers you. And I begin to think about God is so much bigger than me. He's so much bigger than you. Just picture right there from your home that if God were standing behind you, his shadow would take and cast over you so that all the enemy is afraid of the shadow of God. Not so much your shadow. The enemy is afraid of the shadow of God over you. That's Psalm 91. And when you pray through that scripture, you can bank on the promises that he's going to protect you from COVID-19 and any other plague or sickness. And he can bring healing and deliverance to you in the midst of this trouble. Okay? The... Uh, the second thing now, when we're talking about like the second thing that you should do as a Christian response is that you should be careful, okay? When we're talking about um, being 
uh, careful. Don't be stupid. Proverbs uh, 27, 12, Proverbs 24, 16, and Matthew 4, 5 through 7 really back up the point is that some pastors or preachers, you know, they're a little strange. They're taking and trying to grab the cobra by its neck and they're trying to play with the snake. You know, look, I got the power of God. It says, listen, the Bible never tells you to test God. In fact, Jesus' uh, response to the devil uh, when the devil was tempting him in the desert was trying to tell the devil uh, that you not to put the Lord your God to the test. So when some people are trying to uh, treat this um, COVID-19 thing as if, well, it's just no big deal. I'm going to run out there and uh, and try to be uh, like completely brave in the things of God. Yes, you should be brave, but you shouldn't be stupid. Don't test the sickness. Take necessary precautions. Wash your hands. Be careful around folks. Pay attention to what they have as uh, some reasons. If you're sick, don't go to work. Okay, try to pay attention to the precautions they're taking so they can keep the spread of this sickness from going any further. That's smart. That's biblical. Look up those Bible verses, Proverbs 27, Proverbs 24, and Matthew 4, 5 through 7. The third thing that you should be doing as a Christian response is you should be helpful. You should be uh, helpful. Instead of just thinking of yourself, hiding in your basement with all of your toilet paper, hand sanitizer, and your 16 pounds of ground beef, get out there and try and help somebody. Okay, if, if you are healthy and you notice that somebody else is home and they're the elderly, they're the infirmed, they are immune compromised, and they're afraid of going to the uh, um, grocery store to get some, to fight, to try to get some food, why don't you take and offer them, hey, I'll go and I'll go take care of bringing you the food. That should be your response. And then, then they can take and hand, they can sanitize the stuff before they bring it in the house, okay? Uh, keep that kind of thing in mind, those three things. That's the Christian response. Be prayerful, be careful, and be helpful, all right? But this week, what, I, what I've recognized is, which is really cool, our church family, thank you so much, Living Hope, for helping us to look after the elderly. We have had assembled a little task force here at, at uh, the church to try and reach out to all of those who are having trouble, trying to help them make sure that they have what they need. Then we've recognized that uh, we can help people on the outside. Galatians 6.10, we have it on our wall here. So then while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially the household of faith. We have taken and being able to take up a small collection last Sunday. I thought it was the coolest thing. We delivered it over to the medical team at Strong West, which is the hospital in our backyard. And we were able to supply for several shifts food, pizza, and donuts so that they could have what they needed in this time. And it really ministered uh, to the group of folks. And they sent us some pictures. And you can check it out on our Facebook page. And I'm not saying it because I'm prideful. What I'm just saying is there's things that we can do during this time to be helpful. With that said, I says, Lord, what do you want me to say this Sunday? And I recognized we need to go a little deeper about anxiety. So hence the title of the message again, Anxiety Relief, The Power of the Squeeze. Okay, if I could have, um, where is uh, Philip? Can I have you come give me a hand real quick? Can you drag this uh, uh, thing over here for me? I'm going to demonstrate something for you. You're going to bring that right over here. All right. Very cool. Awesome. Guys, what do I have here? Mike, we got people watching. Okay. We got people watching on there. What do we have here? Oh. Oh, man, this looks good. You guys like that or what? Is that cool or what, huh? Now, what I'm going to ask... <clears throat> Has life ever been treating you like this? You ever kind of treating you a little, little kind of just squeezing you up? What are you doing? Pastor. <laughs> you guys see that? You see that? You guys are getting real mad at me because I'm destroying donuts. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take this one. What do you think here? You guys that look really good, right? You really want to eat one of these? 
Now, you ever felt like the world and all of everything is kind of treating you like this? It's just squeezing you. Now, unfortunately, it's not doing everything I want it to do because I'm supposed to be squeezing out the stuff inside. <laughs> but look, you ever feel like this donut all kind of shriveled up? It's kind of messed you over. Whatever, it's just taken and squeezing the life right out of you, and it leaves you look like a shriveled up kind of donut. Who wants to be that? I don't want to be like that. It, you know, when this thing all came out, what I've recognized is that People are under some level of anxiety because of the coronavirus and because of whatever else that's going on in their life, the stock market crashing and people worried about their 401k, am I going to be able to go to work? And it's kind of left us looking a little bit like this. And I don't know about you, but that's not the best witness in the world to the world. But you know, it's okay to admit when you're Christian that the world has done this to you. It's what you do with it that can end up trying to be able to restore you to a regular donut that looks appetizing. This, eat, guys, look, this no longer looks appetizing in comparison to this, correct? And what kind of witness do we want to be in this world of the Lord? So what I've recognized, i got to try and take and clean up my hands for a second here. Mike, if I could have you take and pull that away. Um, <clears throat> so... When the world has kind of squeezed you, what it does is it leaves you like Proverbs 17, 22. Thank you very much. Which, by the way, we've got hand sanitizer. Do you like that? Does that look cool or what? <laughs> People are like, no, you need to wash your hands. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy bir oh, which, by the way, guys, it is actually somebody's birthday today. It is Mama Kern's birthday. Everyone say happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mama Kern. Woohoo! All right. So, with that said, now, anxieties can kind of have this effect on you. If I can have these donut, the uh, donut uh, thing pulled away, I'm going to save these for later. All right, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. This is where you need your Bible. If you will, do me the favor and open up to Psalms chapter 32 verses 3 through 5. Psalms 32. And we're going to pick up here in the Bible. I want to show you something about what to do with anxieties and what this means with the power of the squeeze. You never really know what is inside until you're squeezed. Watch this. Psalms chapter 32, verses 3 through 5. Now listen, in context of sin, David wrote this. And look at how David feels. When I kept silent, my bones became brittle for my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was drained as in the summer heat. Look at how he feels. Guys, his bones became brittle. He's groaning all day long. He's upset. He's anxious about his sin, the things that were, he, he needed to um, deal with. Look at how he deals with it. When it says that uh, your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was drained in the summer heat, Selah. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. You see how David dealt with his sin? If you just try to hide it, if you try to hide how you feel, and you don't deal with it and face it head on, it's going to eat you up inside. The same principles, I believe, that are here when you're dealing with sin are the same principles you have to deal with your anxieties. You have to bring them before the Lord. The way that David got relief from his sin was to acknowledge it, that it's there, and then to confess it before God. And that's exactly what you and I have to do. We have to take and acknowledge our sin, and that we have to then confess it before God. We say, well, Jimmy, what's that got to do with anxieties? Look at it. When you bring your anxieties before the Lord, in Philippians 4, 6, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, make your request be made known to God. You have to acknowledge that there is anxieties in there. Um, 
I think, like, for sometimes some Christians, including myself sometimes, we think that there's something wrong if we have anxieties. Do you know that the Bible never actually says that? The Bible actually tells you, he, the Bible assumes you have them and that you need to do something with them. So when you're anxious about this uh, COVID-19 scare, you're anxious about the stock market, do I have a job? You know, when am I going to be able to open up my business again? You need to take and have a mentality that says, there's nothing wrong with me if I have those anxieties. What's wrong with me is if I do nothing with them. I have to acknowledge the power of the squeeze is it's showing you that something's wrong inside. Reality check number one. Just think with me this. If you never face how you feel, you will always feel what you are not willing to face. I'll say it again. If you never face how you feel, you will always feel what you are not willing to face. So this pandemic, the stock market crash has put a real squeeze on people. And for some, it's really let their true colors shine. Some for the, the worst and some for the better. Um, the anxiety is when you're anxious sometimes, you can just about have a conversation with somebody and they know you're anxious because you're throwing up on them with how you behave and how you say things. Or, or perhaps sometimes when you're squeezed, you actually are seeing how well you're doing in your Christianity. When you have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control, you're actually seeing the fruit of the Spirit being squeezed out of you. In the middle of this, this time, when you're anxious, you have to deal with it. Put it into perspective. So, regardless when you are squeezed, whatever inside, good or bad, is going to come out. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Be thankful that God has allowed you to see what's in there. If you're not thankful, you may not grab a hold of what God is doing. So I'll, I'll tell you what the anxieties are of a pastor. The pastor is like, nobody's here. Lord, what are you going to do with church if we have to do eight weeks of church like this? How are we going to handle this? And then the Lord begins to then show me, you know, you're anxious, Jimmy. You need to take care of this. Okay, Lord, forgive me. Have mercy on me. I recognize those anxieties are there. I bring them before you kicking and screaming. Take care of slaying them, Lord. I'm going to trust you. You are my strong tower. You are my fortress. You are my most high. You're going to protect my family from this sickness. You're going to heal us. You're going to deliver us. A thousand may thaw my, white, my one side and 10,000 at the right. You're going to take care of me, Lord. And when you have that kind of faith, it squashes those anxieties and puts them away. But until you've acknowledged they're there, you won't deal with them. You have to know that they're in there. Pastor, how can I be thankful for this pandemic and this crisis I'm facing right now? I'm a mess. Look, the crisis is revealing what's inside. When you are squeezed in this crisis, think of this. Are you afraid of dying or are you afraid of others dying? It should cause you to pray for yourself and pray for others. Lord, protect me. Keep others safe. Help them not to die from this sickness. But it should also bring up the great point that you're afraid of death. When we're afraid of dying, it should be a crisis, should be a good reality check of, where, of what's inside. And if I'm afraid of dying, I should deal with that. Now listen carefully. Look, 160,000 people die every day of something around the world. If you look at the global statistics, my bigger crisis is not being scared of dying of COVID-19. You know what it is? My bigger crisis is where are those 160,000 people right now? Heaven or hell? That's real reality, guys. This this Sickness is reality in this world, but the bigger reality is, is where are the people when they die of this? We should be praying for souls. Lord, help people to get it right before it's too late. Certainly, we should be not minimizing what's going on. We should be praying for people so that they don't get, they don't get hurt by this sickness or that they get healed from it. But we want to make sure that when anyone dies, that they know Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. That's more important than everything else out there. If you don't grab a hold of that, we're not in the right place. It says in Hebrews 9.27, 
and it is appointed for man once to die, and then the judgment. Pastor Jim, I'm so afraid of getting this sickness. I don't want to die. I don't want my, other, my kids to die. I don't want my relatives to die of this. I get it. That's a great concern. Pray for them. Protection. But what if they do die, or what if you are going to die? Are you afraid of death? Let the crisis draw out the deepest of anxieties so that you will deal with them. If you don't deal with them in this, what I am proposing is it's only going to come back in the next crisis. It's only going to reach you again, and it's going to bother you. You're going to say, well, I kind of dealt with it, but then you're going to hit the next crisis. Oh, no, I'm afraid again. No, 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 no. Listen, deal with it now so that when you stand in the midst of having to face death, you are not going to be afraid because you know that you are okay and forgiven through Jesus Christ your Lord. So, reality check number two. Don't let this crisis continue to squeeze out fear. Now let it squeeze out priority. Has anxiety been squeezed out over your 401k in the economy? Do I have a job to go to? Remember, Matthew 6, 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Listen, I'm going to come up close. Can you see me now? Don't freak out. God's got this. He's going to be with you. He's going to take care of you. We will all have lost a lot of money in our retirement for a moment. Let's just pretend it never came back. Could that be the worst thing that's going to happen to us in this world? Is it the worst thing that can happen in the next life? Listen. Listen carefully. Have your perspective. And you have to trust the Lord. Sometimes those anxieties arise when we're losing all of our money because we are recognizing, oh my gosh, that's my safety net. That's the thing that's going to keep me safe. That's the thing that's going to help me get through. And when that money goes away, now we're like, oh, now what? Listen, you've just been under the power of the squeeze. The squeeze has shown you what's inside. You're afraid of not having money. We should not be afraid of not having money. The Bible says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things should be added unto us. If we put him first and his principles above everything else, God will make sure you have clothing and food. That is that scripture when you actually look it up in context. Do you need anything else? Well, yeah, I'd like to have shelter. I'd like to have what I need. God's going to take care of it if you put him first. So what I have recognized when I look at that kind of scripture is reality check number three. You need to let Bible be the prescription to your anxiety sickness. Think of me with this. When you have a mild headache, what do you do? Mike Mags, what do you do when you have a headache? Uh, usually take... Sure. Mike Mags is telling me when he has a mild headache, he may take an ibuprofen. Maybe you take a Tylenol. Maybe you're going to take a one aspirin. If you just take one, and then later in the day it gets worse, what are you going to do, Mike Mags? Um, probably take another one. You're going to take another one. Pastor Jim, listen, I spent 10 minutes with the Lord in my devotionals this morning, and why in the world am I still so anxious? Well, let me guess. Listen, you've had nine hours of COVID-19 breaking news special reports, and you've had 10 minutes with the Lord. Do the math. If you do that, if you just take and recognize I've spent nine hours filling myself full of anxiety. Now, I'm not minimizing you shouldn't know what's going on. You should know what's going on. But you don't need to have your mind fully in that and away from the Lord. Ten minutes with God, nine hours in the things of the world. Listen, the, the Bible teaches you in Colossians, Colossians, guys, of, of chapter 3, verse 2. I, I remember this. This is something I find fascinating. Pastor Jim, you're too heavenly minded for any earthly good. Your head's in the clouds. I know what I want to tell him. I says, thank you very much. My head is in the clouds because that's where the Bible tells me it should be. Colossians 3, 2 says, have your mind on the things above and not beneath. Have your things on, on heavenly things. And then it tells you in that same scripture, it says, and don't have your mind on earthly things. 
This is going to help you, not only from the comfort of your home, but when you're ready to walk out that door and go into the supermarket. I know a lot of you are afraid to try to go, well, geez, I don't know who touched that cart last. Look, listen to me. Pay close attention. Have your mind on the things of God's going to protect me. I'm going to be careful. I'm going to wipe down the cart, but I still got to get groceries. I got to do what I got to do. But you have to take and let the Bible be the prescription to your problems. Take more Bible in. Take and put less COVID-19 news, the nine hours of reports away. And spend more time with the Lord and you will begin to become more confident that God's going to get you through. Let the power of the squeeze show you what's inside. Has the stress tripled on you since now that you have to homeschool your kids and you're trying to figure out how to go to work. Listen, I'm a pastor. I, Sarah had to go to work on Thursday, Friday, my wife. She homeschooled the kids now from Monday through Wednesday, tried to figure the whole thing out. She did an awesome job trying to give me a bullet point list of what to do with the kids on Thursday and Friday. And I got to that and I looked at the list and I'm like, ah! What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to get this done? And then I'm supposed to work and put a message together for Sunday? What? How am I going to do this? And what you're doing is you're looking up. You're like, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Right? Do you know that that is actually the response that Jesus told his disciples should have in the time of the end? Open up with me to Luke chapter 21. <clears throat> Be mindful, we're almost there. We're going to get close to being finished. Luke chapter 21. Take a look at this scripture. Luke 21, verses 10 and 11, and verses 25 through 28. If you open that up, Eric, wake up. I know you're taking a nap. Come on, pay attention. Here we go. Nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, Jesus said, and there will be great earthquakes and in various places plagues and famines. Does that sound familiar? And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven, verse 25. There will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth dismay among nations, in perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves, men fainting from fear and the expectation of the things which are coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now listen and pay attention to how Jesus tells them to respond. But when these things begin to take place, straighten up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Guys, we need to look up. The power of the squeeze shows you what's inside, but we need to deal with it and look up to the Lord. In the end, guys, listen, in the end, things are going to be a whole lot worse than this. This is just a foretaste of what is coming. Be thankful it's not as bad as what it is. As some people say, listen, pastor, is the end of the world coming? Is this what this means? Uh, you know, how am I supposed to view this? And I've had some people ask, they'll, they'll, they'll ask, is this God bringing punishment upon the world for their sin? Or... I've had someone ask the other side, is this the devil? What I want to take in, try to get across to us is that you should pay less attention to the um, who is responsible to what your response should be. Look at what Jesus tells his disciples the response should be. Take a look at this verse, Luke chapter 21. 28, straighten up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. We got to look up. We have to stop. The, what stress does is it crunches you down. It makes you put your head down and you begin to feel something called despair. What are we going to do? It's getting closer to home. New York State has a whole bunch of cases of COVID-19. It's, it's the hot spot. I get it. We live in it. But you know what? Take and do what God tells you to do. Straighten up and look up. And your redemption draws near. Lord, come quickly. Help us. Save us. You should pray that. You should. And it, it can help you get perspective. 
But I'm going to give you my most favorite verse to finish with. Listen. A reality check number four. Romans 8.28. This verse should be in every Christian's mind almost all the time when it comes to anxiety. If you can just focus on this verse and focus in on what part is you have to play, you will care less of who's responsible. You will care less whether it is God bringing punishment on the nation or whether it is the devil trying to kill you, which are all great topics to study out and for us to do. I love to study that stuff. But if you want anxiety relief, Romans 8, 28. For God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. You have to focus on your part. So God, some people say, well, Jimmy, so does that mean that God's just going to cause even this whole COVID-19 and everything to work out for everybody's good? Nope, I didn't say that. He causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. So if you focus on your part, I need to love God and be called according to his purpose. Take and pray, spend time in your prayer closet with him, read the scriptures, apply it to your life, turn away from your wicked ways, do what God is calling you to do. And when you are doing that, somehow he's going to even make this mess turn out for your good. That's how it works. Pastor, I want that for me. I want that for me. You may be sitting from the comfort of your home. He says, I want to make sure that even this is going to turn out for my good. Are you a Christian? Are you a follower of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you afraid to go to bed at night that you might not wake up? Where are you going to go? Where are you going to be? Are you going to be with God? The Bible teaches us, like I said, it's appointed for man once to die and then the judgment. If you have to stand before God in judgment day, would you be okay with him? This is my invitation to you. If you're afraid of dying and you want to make sure that you're going to go to heaven when you die, this is what you need to do. You need to admit that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. All of us have messed up. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It tells us that the wages of sin is death. That when we sin and we do the wrong thing, we have to stand before God in judgment day and he will judge us for those sins. But Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins to pay your fine, to pay your penalty and mine, our death penalty, so that we might be forgiven of all of those sins. Pastor, I want that. I want to make sure that I'm okay with God. Well, then what you need to do is admit you're a sinner. God, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me clean. Tell him what you're sorry for. And the Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For all those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do you want to have true anxiety relief? Battle your fear of death. Let this power of the squeeze of us being afraid of this sickness bring us to a place to deal with death directly and say, I am not going to be afraid to die. Now, I'm not going to go out there and taunt the sickness, but I am going to be in a place where I, if I do die of whatever it may come, I want to make sure I'm going to heaven. So if that is you and you want to make sure that you're forgiven of your sins and that you're on your way to heaven, bow your head with me and pray this prayer right now. Father, Forgive me. I know that I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a Savior. Thank you for sending me Jesus Christ to die on the cross for my sins. And that when I confess that Jesus is Lord, I am going to now do everything you call me to and I'm going to read my Bible and I'm going to pray and I'm going to spend more time in the Word with you in prayer and around other people who believe than I am with being worried about the special news and the breaking news reports on the television. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I'm sorry for hurting you. Thank you for Jesus dying on the cross for my sins, and I believe in him as my Savior, my only hopes of forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for dying for me. Thank you for making a way for me to go to heaven. And I ask this of you, Father, your blessing upon me in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you have prayed that prayer, and I'm, I'm asking you, please connect with us and let us know. We want to help you in your relationship with the Lord. God forgives you. He washes you clean. He wants to make you 
and mold you into his image and what he wants you to be in life is far greater than anything you can do with yours. Let this crisis be a reconnection for you with your relationship with God. And that is my prayer for you today. And if you would, let's take a moment and let's pray for all those who are sick that with this COVID-19 coronavirus, as well as for everyone with bronchitis, people with uh, pneumonia, people with the flu, Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I do pray for all those who have anxieties about this, that your spirit will be with them. You help them to let the power of the squeeze, to squeeze out really what's inside, good or bad, and help them all deal with it. Help them, Lord, to not hide it or pretend it's not there so then it only then crops up in the next crisis. But help them to deal with it now so then they will have victory and confidence in you above all that which scares them. I pray, Father, for those who are sick with this coronavirus. Heal them, Lord. And may you receive the glory, honor, and praise. Take away the sickness from their bodies in Jesus' name. And make them to recover. Help them to rise up. Your word says the prayer of faith will restore the one who is sick. Help them Lord, to call for the elders of the church that we might anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will restore the one who is sick. And I pray, Father, that you'll protect us, keep us safe from getting this virus, and that the numbers will come down. And that, Lord, we can certainly see that you have been victorious over the sickness. Help us to be mindful of you, to be in tune with you, and to grow in relationship with you. We just ask this of you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, God bless you guys. Hopefully we will uh, take and learn how to do this more and more. Uh, thank you for bearing with me in it as I am just trying to figure out how to talk to a camera instead of a whole bunch of people. It's kind of strange and weird for me, just like it probably is for you. And I ask you that uh, stay tuned. Now, with that said, if you're wondering, because you're a part of our church family or you're just watching for the first time, how might I support this ministry? Well, please do me the favor and uh, you'll see a uh, come up on the screen that you can uh, give your tithes and your offerings can be mailed to P.O. Box 317, Hamlin, New York, 14464. So uh, please uh, support us as the Lord would put it on your heart. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to call me, 585-739-4071, and I would love to talk to you in person. God bless you, and we'll talk to you very soon. That is way harder than you realize. That just is terrible.